We knew this was coming. What Roger wants, Roger gets. And Roger wants Thursday night flexing. He wants the opportunity to take a bad game that is on the schedule for Amazon and move it and swap it out with a game that will do better. This is all about boosting the streaming numbers. And look, we're part of it now with two exclusive Peacock streaming games. I understand the impetus, the motivation, the desire to drive up those streaming numbers as much as possible, to force habits to change from three-letter TV networks to the streaming platforms. I get it. I get it. But, but you've already got one of the most influential owners in the sport on record saying it's abusive to fans because it is abusive to fans. It is abusive to those who make plans to travel on Thursday or Sunday. And see, that's, it's funny to see how this plays out because obviously it was voted through yesterday, 24, yes, eight against exactly the number they needed to make it happen. We'll talk more about the dynamics yeah, of the I like no to, votes yeah. and the yes votes coming yeah. up. But but what I see from the people who are on the payroll already, and I know they get mad when I say it, but it doesn't make it any less true. Plenty of reporters out there on the payroll or reporters out there who would like to be on the payroll someday, possibly if my current job dries up and maybe I need to keep that door open, pushing this bull crap that, well, they won't use it very often. They won't use it very often. Don't worry, they won't use it very often. It doesn't matter because everybody now who sets one of these trips for weeks 13 to 17 has to worry about the possibility that it's all going to be for naught. And it doesn't matter that it's not going to happen very often. It's on your radar screen. Just like if you plan a vacation to a place that could get hit by a hurricane during hurricane season. That's in your brain. Hey, where's the hurricane going to come from? Do I have to completely change my my plans on the fly? So now, for anyone who's inclined to take their family to Las Vegas or anywhere as a destination during the holidays for a game, you have to factor in the possibility, slim as it may be, that you're going to have to completely scrap it, sell the tickets, Get refunds from the airline if they're even available. You get some voucher that's good for maybe a year, and then it goes away. You could lose that money. You got to cancel your reservations. You got to do all sorts of stuff. You've got time off that you've arranged that you have to rearrange. I heard from somebody yesterday, too, who said, look, it's just a matter of me going to a game at my usual stadium, a night game. I need to take the next day off because I have to be at work so early. I can't go to work that early after getting home that late. So I take a day off so I can go to that game and I set it up in advance. And then all of a sudden they move the game to an, and then it screws everything up and yeah. I've taken a day off. I didn't need to take off. So there's all sorts of inconveniences, Chris, that they just don't, they just don't care. They don't care. If they do care, they don't care enough to abandon this desire to have the ability to break glass in event of emergency and prop up the streaming audience for a Thursday night game. No, I, I, I know you're right. It's, it, it's, it's a tough one. It definitely screws over the fans that want to be in in attendance. I mean, yeah, what, what's I know it could be twenty eight days of notice, whatever. But I, I mean, the flighting the the flight industry is is not very easy right now. And it's yeah, I mean, I don't know to make new new flight. What's that going to cost fans? The hotel arrangements, like you talked about, all that. It it does seem harsh on the the fan who wants to be a part of the in in person experience. And then of course. You know, there's the player safety element that, again, also just gets thrown out the side here. This is no longer a conversation, and this is why they have continually told us, "Oh, there's no injuries on Thursday night." There's because they this is what this is always on their radar, right? I think players can look at it and go, "Oh, wait, these eight owners who voted against it, they actually care about players." You know, that's something I'd say to all the NFLPA. Look at those eight teams that voted against it, because I think you got there eight owners that you know for sure that actually like the players and the fans. You know, I know most of them do or whatever, but at least their actions are speaking loudly. Um, but here's the other thing I'll throw out, Mike. Like, it's messed up. They're doing that to the people with the infant experience. But I also want to go for, like, you and me. I want to be like, thank God. I mean, th that was abusive having to watch the Colts and the Broncos last year, right? I don't want any games like that either. So it does make – you know, that element of the season and that Thursday night package better for sure. But yeah, it seems a little bit numb to the everyday go to the ballpark type of fan. Yeah, look, 
I understand we're going to get potentially better games, although there's no guarantee you're going to get a better game, especially because to get it through, they compromised on 28 days notice, yeah. 15 days notice. So th- this to me, this to me is only going to be used to avoid 62 to 7. Do you remember what game had a final score of 62 to 7 oh, oh, 60. on NBC oh. in 2011? Wow, two thousand Saints Colts. Oh wow, Saints yeah. Colts. Right. No Peyton Manning. Yep, that's that was right. the year that it was Curtis Painter or somebody like that, and it was Saints Colts. It was Drew Brees and Peyton Manning. Oh no, Peyton Manning's not playing, and that Sunday night game was a total disaster. And it happened before the normal flexing window, and it's that's one of the right. reasons why they moved the flexing window from yeah. week eleven back to week five or six in the event of emergency. This is, I believe. And let's look. Let's let's just say, for instance, for instance, you've got week 14, Patriots at Steelers for Thursday night football. Let's say, for instance, Kenny Pickett has a season-ending injury. And I hate to even say that because then, oh, you jinxed him if he has one. But, you know, it's Mason Rudolph or Mitch Trubisky at quarterback. That's the kind of thing that could get them to start looking to put something else there. Any of those light games, Saints-Rams. If the Rams are a complete and total disaster again this year, that that's one that, that could move. But it's going to happen 28 days in advance. So it's going to be that's gonna something things, where yeah, yeah. you know it's a really bad game and you know, or at least you reasonably believe, that you can pick a game to put that's there. better. That regardless of what happens over the next four weeks, yeah. it's not going to be any worse. Yeah, it's only going right. to be better. That's right. At 28 days, though, I mean, that that is, you know, that's different than, you know, the normal thing, like you said, where the 15 days or whatever it is, two weeks. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, hey, we, we don't like this game, right? Oh, okay, great. We pick this game, even though it's not the best, but it's still pretty good. And then, like, what? The two of those teams go on a four-game losing streak, right? It, it, it won't look that good, but exactly. you know that that's that's the risk they take there. But I guess that's what they had to do to slam this through or get this done in the uh, in the voting circle there. And it's a one-year thing unless they don't use it at all this year. Then it kicks over to 2024 where they can do it that year. At some point, though, they'll have to vote again, and they'll have to be 24. It's not a permanent rule change. See, once you make a permanent rule change and you get 24 behind that, it takes 24 to kill it. As long as it's temporary, it always takes 24 to keep it going. So there's hope maybe that the next time around, one of the teams that voted yes will decide well, vote. no. And as Pete Demolitis pointed out, we need to be clear. This isn't just the inconvenience to the people who are expecting to go to the Thursday game. You could be any fan. This is where it's a problem. This is where that risk is there for anyone that sets up a trip. You set up a trip for a Sunday game. There's a chance that game's going to get sucked to Thursday night. And there's also a chance it's going to get sucked to Monday night. So the whole thing sucks for fans. And I like that Mark Davis was willing to come out and say it. Last time around, we had John Mara call it abusive to fans. And he has reiterated his position, and I credit him for not caving. Mark Davis said, just make the schedule and play it. If you have a Raiders-Chargers game in Las Vegas scheduled for a Thursday, and all of the fans driving from L.A., the Raiders fans and all the Chargers fans buy their tickets and book their hotels, how in the hell do you schedule it and now say, sorry, it's on a Sunday? How in the hell do you do that? Everybody should get the respect. That's the part I'm strong on. Bravo, Way Mark go. Davis. Way to go, Mark. Stick it to him. Tell him like it is. They're so obsessed with hitting Goodell's billion, whatever it is, $27 billion in revenue. He's got this number that he wants to hit. He's so freaking obsessed with hitting it that the human reality just kind of disappears. And he needs people inside the building. It's one thing for us to say it because he can just ignore us. He can't ignore the people who are the members of Club Oligarch saying this is abusive, saying, how in the hell are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And hopefully they'll keep doing it. And some of those people who voted yes, Chris, maybe next time around, they'll slide over to no. Yeah, I I got great respect for for Mark Davis. And, you know, like his father, he ain't afraid to speak up against the NFL and what's right or wrong or whatever there. I I, I love that about him. I do. And I think he's a guy that you know, because of the way he grew up and all that, he is pr- player and fan friendly. You know, and and you know he is aware of that. So uh, good for him for speaking out. And then you know we talk about the fans and do all that, but like the other aspect too is how about the freaking people who are doing this? How about how about you're the you're on one of these teams, right? Let's bring up the schedule. 
and okay, hey, wait, you know, hey, it's it's week 12, honey. We play on a Thursday. You know, I know it's your grandma's birthday that Saturday or whatever. We could schedule something and leave town here. Or we can do something as a family, whatever that, oh, wait, now we're not playing and it's a game on Sunday. Sorry, scrap the deal, honey. Sorry, it's a few weeks out. That's, I mean, it's it's a little messed up to the players and coaches that way too who are uh, have no life and no days off really from August till the season ends. Uh, I don't love that aspect either. So that that's one thing that jumped out to me, Mike. And then here's the last thing at least I'll throw out on this subject. Mike, what did what'd they give the Saints and the Commanders to switch? What did they do? What did they give those well, two well, teams? I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Now, this is very interesting because, and I haven't completely nailed this down yet. Let me start with the Commanders. Yeah. I was under the clear impression the Commanders were against this last time around. Now, they didn't do a formal vote. And I'm not sure that the reporting on who was for or against was completely accurate. But it's my clear understanding that the commanders were against it in March. Now they're for it. I got comment from PR with the commanders today. They were for it in March. I'm not so sure they were. And I know that there were people in the organization that were strongly opposed to it. So I don't know what their position was back in March. And and now and wouldn't it make sense to say, oh no, we weren't again. Yeah, no, of course. no, no. Of course. Nothing to see here. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Please don't explore the possibility that we did this as a way to ensure that the Josh Harris deal goes through, or maybe Jason Wright, who's there casting the votes on behalf of the team because the Snyders are gone. Jason Wright, you know, thinking about his position and it would help to have people at the league office on my side and they seem to really want this. So, yeah, maybe we should just go along to get along here. Sure. That's hovering over this on the commander side. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.